Hello YouTube, uh, this is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services and today I would like to announce that we have a promo coming up. Uh, we're about to hit 5,000 subscribers which is not really a big deal uh, for any type of a channel uh, on YouTube but uh, it is a big deal for me because um, it, I've been really putting in a lot of work and making these videos recently and I'm really glad to see the growth of this channel and you guys are engaging in more conversations, asking more questions and uh, overall spending more time watching this content that I'm putting out. So uh, a lot of you have been interested in uh, some of the services that we're offering and for the month of October in 2016 we're gonna have a promo for anything that has to do with Western Digital Passport and Elements drives in two and a half inch format. So if you have a Passport or an Elements drive that is in the two and a half inch enclosure that has now never been opened, uh, feel free to click the link in the description and it will take you to uh, our website where you can just request the service for it. Now this promotion is only valid for the October. It's, it's gonna start on October 1st and it's gonna end at the end of the month. There's no extensions. You need to have your drive delivered to us within that time frame. If it gets here the day before or if it gets here the day after the promotion, I cannot apply the same rule, so I'm sorry in advance, but hopefully some of you who in required this service uh, previously that did not want to go through expense of uh, having heads replaced, now you can get it done for one flat rate fee of $400 USD for any type of problem that your passport may have, whether it's logical issue or physical. I have a 500 gigabyte unit here that uh, needs recovery. This unit has a slow response on it, but it may potentially have a failing head. These units usually have two heads because they're slim, uh, comparing to the one terabyte and two terabyte versions of the same device. Uh, one thing that they all do have in common for passports and elements on two and a half inch uh, size is the proprietary USB 3.0 interface. So uh, in order for me to gain access to service area, in order to correct uh, ReloList, uh, which is a module that's kept on disk um, and that is causing this drive to be extremely slow, I will be converting it to the SATA interface like I did with the previous case uh, on the identical hard drive. So um, if I was to plug this in, this unit will probably take forever um, to show up. And uh, without any results, it will just spin and idle. Uh, this unit specifically doesn't make any clicking sounds, but it never gets recognized. So it sounds like the drive has a problem with the 30 second module, uh, which needs to be uh, cleaned out and restricted for any further entry of potential bad sectors. To confirm that the cable is not an issue, I'm gonna use it on the working drive first, and I'm gonna show you what's happening in the disk utility if you guys pay closer attention to the screen, even though it's not that big. Um, you'll be able to see that the drive will quickly show up in both Disk Utility and our studio. There you go. Uh, so a data drive showed up in here. And if we go into the uh, R studio and populate it, it also comes up in here. So now I'm gonna disconnect the device. So now I'm gonna connect this uh, passport drive to it. The drive starts to blink making these sounds. Which are not really uh, clicking sounds, but uh, then I wouldn't call them normal also. If I refresh the screen in our studio, it just seems like nothing is happening. If I go into disk utility, it does show that my 
WD, my passport is coming up and it even shows the uh, capacity on the unit, but it doesn't show us any partitions. And our studio is just freezing with it. So uh, what can we do? These drives, unlike uh, one terabyte units, are actually using T5 instead of T6 screwdriver. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark, well, we don't really need to mark them because they are, uh, one is SATA and one is uh, USB. So I'm just gonna undo both of them. So the uh, chip that we'll be removing is actually right here. And uh, from previous attempt, from previous recovery of this unit, I already uh, painted it with some silver uh, paint so that it stands out. And uh, this time on the patient's drive, I'll just leave it as is, so dark. The U12 position chip will need to be transplanted in order to make this uh, SATA board compatible with this hard drive that we're trying to recover data from. Fume extractor is on, adding flux to both of them. Alright, that's it for adaptation. So I have connected the patient's drive to the channel number three, and I have a target drive that will be performing the disk imaging to is on channel one. Uh, sorry, channel zero. So the unit does get recognized, gives us full ID, which is a great start. But it says SED drive locked. It doesn't surprise me, so there is a workaround for this. I'm going to turn it off. And that's the reason why I actually have my business card here is because I'm going to use it as an isolator um, to block out heads so we can deal with uh, the issue regarding um, self-encrypting drive being locked. So we're going to isolate heads here. That's probably good enough. Once we get the registry lights, uh, for the kernel mode, I'm going to go into the utility. Right now, the drive is not going to be uh, recognizing and giving us the passport, but it will allow us to do certain things that will help us uh, to obtain that passport later on. So we're going to block access to service area. Once the access is blocked, we're going to exit the utility and turn the drive off. Now, with blocked service area, the drive is not going to throw us the message that it's uh, SED locked. And by loading the uh, DIR into the RAM of the drive, we'll be able to link up a donor, um, a loader for it as well. With uh, following these steps, we'll gain access to service area. And finally, the sacred 30 second module. Same thing, we're not getting passport. We're only are able to access uh, the device in uh, kernel mode. But up here now, we're able to load DIR uh, from service area, as well as linking up the loader for this device.
once the unit loads up it actually allows us to work with the uh, uh, with the firmware of this unit so we're gonna go ahead and in service area by reading by the ID we can um, disable self-encrypting mode for it okay so that's been taken care of now we have to deal with the slow response and remove the slow response and um, unlock the access to service area inside of the ROM as well. All right, so now, presumably, if I exit the utility, turn off the drive, power it back on, we'll be able to enter the utility without having any issues, and we will be able to get access to the sectors, which we couldn't get access to previously for several reasons. Right now, Auto Detect allows us to select the family. It doesn't throw up a message for a self-encrypting drive. And the unit loads into a, a, a utility in a normal mode, giving us proper ID and allowing us to read sectors. Here's the sector zero. This drive does have encryption on it, but this utility allows us to auto detect the self encrypting mechanism of the unit and apply that to the structure. So let me quickly go over what am I about to do right now. Since uh, the imaging uh, revealed that one of the two heads inside of our patient's drive is not responding anywhere on the disk surface, we need to do something in order to uh, make that head functional again. And aside from replacing the head assembly in our situation, there are really no other options. So right now I'm using HDD Surgery Workbench and I will be using HDD Surgery um, Head Replacement Kit for Western Digital products. Uh, in this situation, we needed to have a compatible donor which this drive is for our failed hard drive all right so this unit I worked on in the past that's why it's open but the unit is functional and head one on it is reading so that's the only thing that I really worry about at this point if this performance if this performed well then a single donor can last a long time because we only need this unit this unit to run for a couple of hours uh, while I was editing finishing up the edit for this uh, promo the imaging process for head zero actually got finished on this device so now after removing the head from the donor and putting it in the patient's drive I only have to image out head one for the patient in order to obtain a complete image of this device <laughs> Right now, with new set of heads in this uh, task that we've created, we're able to communicate with head one. So basically the steps that I always take when dealing with uh, HFS catalogs is to image out the catalog first, but that process takes time. This uh, video is already too long, so I'm just gonna straight jump to uh, uh, imaging process and demonstrate that parts that we couldn't read before, as you can see, 
uh, it goes partially brown and then white partially brown and then white again and that's because there are two heads inside of this drive and head one wasn't able to read before so if I fire it up right now using head one uh, from right from the start of the drive we're able to see that uh, the speed is adequate and uh, brown blocks keep appearing that's uh, because the imaging uh, is moving on for head one at this point and probably within a few hours we'll have a full image the procedure went really well that let us have the entire image sector by sector cloned so the entire recovery is complete and everything looks as if this drive never failed before it's just the information had to be migrated to a new source uh, so for the month of october if you need this done feel free to mail in your drives any western digital two and a half inch hard drive whatever the symptoms are as long as it's not open is treated the same way four hundred dollars for successful recovery you don't pay us anything if we can't get it done so subscribe to this channel hit like and i will see you guys in the next video